Hey, it's your main man, Sabado. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Um, you know, it's funny. I was in a conversation with a good buddy of mine who has a son in his 20s. And we talked a little bit about, you know, as adults talk about their kids, he was mentioning to me that he's having a hard time having his fun, his son understand the importance of, of saving money and, and how to do it. And I, 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 what I mentioned to him was, you know, one of the reasons that he may not be saving money is he may not know how. I mean, it's, it's easy to kind of talk about saving money, and I think people can intellectualize the importance of saving money. But the reality is, is I think people's minds work in a, in a way where they say, you know, what does it mean and how do you do it? And so today's video is really geared towards, you know, either A, those of you that are in your 20s and that, that want to retire early or want to figure out what can I do to get in on this uh, and, and, and retire at some point in my life, or B, those of us that have younger people in our worlds that we want to try to explain uh, how to retire to. And, you know, I'm not going to go into an incredible amount of detail on each of the things. I'm not going to do these huge deep dives because I think this is an area that can get incredibly complicated. And my goal isn't to complicate the situation. My goal is just merely to either create um, the talking points for you when you're talking to somebody or to, to create the understanding to be able to ask the right question because it's my hope you know, that you take the information that we talk about here and you validate that for yourself because everybody's circumstance is a little bit different. And I, before we get into it, I do want to mention that I am not a financial advisor, never even played one on TV, uh, but I did uh, find financial independence and was able to retire early at uh, 51. And so what I'm basically doing is, is trying to help uh, share uh, my experience with you in hopes that it may uh, help and inspire you to uh, to find your path to financial independence and, and potentially uh, retire early. So uh, so the, the first, you know, so first things first, um, you know, the question becomes, you know, why should you care about retirement in your 20s? And, you know, you're probably just starting your career, you know, paying off student loans or thinking about your vacation, your next vacation. But you know, the one thing that starting early means is that you can fully take advantage of something called compound interest. Now, those of you that took uh, economics in school or something of that nature probably remember the term compound interest, but also remember it being very complicated because when you do the formulas for compound interest, it's complicated. And, and I'll be honest with you, when I was in school, that's where they lost me because it was the calculation of compound interest. But what it, what it really is, and it's it, in concept, is that um, you know, it's really just gaining interest on your interest. So it starts to, you start to see how starting early, even in small amounts, you know, can really uh, have a significant impact on building your nest egg. Um, because every period you're, there's it's, you're, you're, there's more money there's more money to grow, and so what you start to see is that starting at 22 and starting at 32 uh, can be a huge difference for people. And so, you know, so what I think we want to talk about now is just you know how to get started. You know, how do you how do you get how do you save? How do you start saving? And so the, the first thing you want to do, and, and we're going to focus on a couple of areas in terms of building that real solid foundation. Um, and, and one of them is, is creating a budget. Uh, and the other one is creating an emergency fund. So, you know, but we'll start with, with taking a uh, uh, talking about the budget. So the easiest way to create your budget is take the money that you make from your job, the money that you make from you know, wherever, wherever, whatever income sources that you have, uh, you know, list those out, write down what, what it is that you make every month and then take your expenses and write your expenses right down next to them. When I was, uh, working, I had a boss once that said, you know, he always talked about budget actual variance. Well, in this one, do income expenses. And then you, it gives you an idea to understand what's left over because what the, the goal of the budget is to help you identify where you have cash to invest. Um, quick story, when I was, and I think I mentioned on the channel at one point, is when I was uh, in my 20s, I, I was broke. I was perpetually broke. 
And I had a conversation with my mom, and my mom sat me down, and she talked about um, a budget. And she said, let's put together a budget. And so we listed my expenses. We listed my um, uh, income. And it turned out I actually had a couple hundred bucks left every month. And I didn't even know that. I didn't even know I had that. And it was because I actually took the time to write it down and then did a line. I did a line by line, found out, hey, I have some money left over. So I was able to put money away. And it was one of the best decisions that I ever made because it there were a lot of, you know, the 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 consequences of that. Um, continued over time with buying my first house, buying my second house, um, you know, and eventually, again, finding financial independence at 51. But, you know, one of the more most important things is making sure that you don't derail um, your your savings or your budget by with 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 emergencies that come up. So it's important to uh, build an emergency fund. Uh, you know, make sure, you know, put away about three to six months worth of expenses. Um, and again, there was a time back in, uh, I think it was about 2001, and I talked about it in an early video, where I got uh, I got laid off. And I was out of work for about nine months. And um, if it wasn't for my net, if it wasn't for my safety net, uh, I, I might have been I might have been in a bad way. I, will, I it would have certainly derailed my ability to to save for retirement. Um, but the goal here is, you know, you don't want to have to dip in your retirement just because something happened because your water heater breaks or because your car has a flat tire. You know, that would be the wrong reason to do it. And so, you know, so create that emergency fund because that emergency fund, you know, is is as my friend would say. Uh, it's clutch. You know, having an emergency fund is clutch. When you need it, you need it. It's like, you know, you, it's like insurance. When you, you put money, you pay insurance companies, you never use it. But when you need it, you're like, I'm glad I had it because you would have got caught with caught with something else. Um, so, you know, but then as you as you start looking at, you know, so you so now that you've got your budget and you found, you know, you found where the cash is and you've started to, um, you know, you've, you've started to work on your emergency fund. So you've got a few months of um um, you know, emergency savings to, to cover you on a, on a rainy day. Uh, when you start looking at the retirement, uh, it's, it's important to understand where, where your money can go. And so next, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about the different types of retirement accounts. And I, I want to focus on, on really three different types of retirement accounts. Uh, number one, you know, is the 401k. Um, most of us are familiar with the 401k and if you can always ask your employer if they have a 401k, but basically what the 401k is, it's a, um, it's a, it's a employer sponsored, um, retirement plan. And so you put money in it every month or every pay period. And usually, normally, employers will have a match. And so you and it's automatically deducted. But the beauty of it is deducted on a pre-tax basis. That money goes into account. And usually employers will have some type of match. Usually it's like four percent or six percent up to certain limits. And, you know, if even if you don't completely max out your 401k, it's always good to make sure that you at least uh, get the amount that's matched because, folks, if, if nothing else, that's free money. Take all the free money you can, legally, that is. <laughs> um, you know, the, the next the next vehicle or the next uh, account I want to talk a little bit about is the Roth IRA. Uh, and the Roth IRA is great because it's all pre-tax, or I'm sorry, after-tax dollars that you contribute to that account. Now, the beauty of that is, is when you withdraw that money, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. So let's say um, you put in, let's say over the course of your of your career, you put in a million dollars. Um, and so you put in that million dollars and you want to retire and you want to take out that million dollars. Well, guess what? You won't have to pay taxes on it because you ha- because those are after tax dollars that you're contributing to the account. As it grows, you don't have to pay capital gains taxes on the growth. And capital gains tax are basically taxes on the money that's uh, on the returns from a 401k or the returns from uh, any type of investment account. And uh, I don't I don't know what the rates are on those. And you could search. So you could look for those on uh, somewhere online. But if you have a Roth IRA, you've already paid taxes on the initial amount that you've that, uh, that cash you got usually from payroll or something else. 
You put it in there as it grows. You don't pay taxes on that. Now, you know, on the the opposite of a of a Roth IRA is a traditional IRA, and traditional IRAs. People usually like traditional IRAs because they have a little bit of a tax benefit because, again, you put the money in there and it's it's uh, it's uh, tax deferred. So you don't similar to the 401k, you don't pay taxes until you withdraw that money. Um, but, you know, and I, I think that the key here is, is, you know, find what works best for you and just start. You know, if you want to focus on the 401k, focus on the 401k. Uh, if you want to focus on a Roth IRA and it's really important to you that you put in after-tax dollars, then go to Roth IRA or a traditional IRA if you want to have it have it tax deferred. Because w- what I found is that when I started uh, putting money into these accounts, I was nervous. Just like many of you out there, I was nervous about putting money into these accounts. But then once it started to grow, I got excited. Because again, the hardest part, like with anything in life, the hardest part is is starting, and so then, you know the you know once you figured out the type of account and uh, that you want to go into and kind of what your direction is, you know then you want to make sure that you're you're wise or that you're you do it the right way or that you're smart about about how you invest and um, you know there's there's different types of there's different types of investment options there's there's stocks there's mutual funds there's bonds. And, you know, the reality is you don't really have to be an expert. You know, the main thing is, is you just want to make sure you diversify. And diversification is the key. You know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. And if you want to be diversified, the easiest way to do it is through low cost index funds. And these are funds that track with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, with the NASDAQ, with the S&P 500. And so generally, these are stocks that will perform the same way that the NASDAQ does. And if you listen to folks like Warren Buffett and other uh, big investors, they talk, they speak very highly on, um, on index funds. Because again, over time, if you look at the stock market, and again, I don't have any fancy charts and graphs and stuff. I, I wish I did, and I probably should incorporate some. But if you would like one, please let me know. But what you find is over time, uh, the market always goes up. Now, you might have periods of time where it drops, but for the most part, uh, historically, the market has always gone up. And when you look at the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones and the uh, and I, I like the S&P 500. And if you look at the S&P 500, it's, it's consistently gone up, um, you know, over the last hundred years. And so they're, they're fairly safe and it gives you. Uh, the ability to really tap into the to the potential of the of the of the stock market. And so and one of the things I like to do is I like to take a look every day and look and see what's the Dow Jones doing and all that. Because, you know, we hear about it on the news, but now we're actually tied into it. And it's and it's and if you have money in there, then you start to see your money grow. You look at your account, and you're like, whoa. And, I, and my thing is, I always like to look at my actual investment accounts like once, you know, every quarter. So that way it's it's there. It's growing. Then every time I look and I'm just like, wow, I got a little bit more. Wow, I got a little bit more. And uh, it's, it's kind of exciting. And then, you know, you want to make sure that you uh, once you figure out the accounts that you want and you and you've you've, you've diversified and you, you've gone into um, the investments that you want. You know, the next thing you want to do is you just want to make sure that you keep the momentum on your um on your investing again it, it, once you get in then you're going to be excited and the easiest way to do it is to as your income grows you get annual increases and stuff like that just increase the amount you know one of the things that i had at my last employer was um every year it was set up so if i got a three percent increase my contribution would go up three percent and the beauty of it is you don't see uh, because like in the 401k, you don't see the money uh, coming in because your employer will take that money directly and, and invest it for you in your 401k. But what that does is it helps you, um, you know, at 3%, it helps you increase the amount. And so, again, the whole goal here is managing with uh, compound interest. And as you, the more you save, the more, you, the more interest you make on your account, the more interest you'll make on your account. Now, did you follow that? The more interest you make on your account, the more interest you'll make on your account because remember, compound interest is interest on the interest. So that way it's the total amount. Um, 
you know, so the more you put in and you also want to avoid things like high interest debt, uh, like credit cards and, and things like that, because, uh, you know, you're paying 20 percent. You know, if you, you could go this year, I think in, in one of my accounts, I, I made 19 percent, you know, the market's rebounding and such, which is great. But remember, a lot of these credit cards are 20 uh, percent. And so if you make 19 percent and your credit cards are 20 percent, then you're negative net um, one percent. So you, you want to make sure that you that you manage that debt. And, and you know, my, I, I think one of the keys are and, and the way to find financial freedom is to uh, is to to minimize your you know, minimize your credit card debt, actually try to get out of it 100 percent. Now, I recognize that. Uh, different people's situations are different, and not everybody can do that. And you know, I again, I do recognize that. And um, you know, don't don't put yourself on the street trying to save for retirement, but you know, take that money that you can and put extra amounts towards your credit card debt because eventually you want your credit card get, debt to get down. And when people ask me and they say, Sabado, what's the number one thing that you think helped you get to uh, financial independence? And my number one thing was debt management. I never kept car payments longer than I needed to because I always wanted to use my cash flow to, to invest. Um, I never, you know, I, when it came to credit cards, I paid off my credit cards. Uh, this is years ago, but I paid off my credit card, high interest credit cards, so I could take that money and I can invest it. And then it got to the point that whenever a bonus or something would come in from work, instead of having to pay off a big credit card or a car note or something like that, what do I do? I invest it. And so, you know, it's it's almost like it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Most of the time when we talk about self-fulfilling prophecies, we talk about something negative. But folks, this is a self fulfilling prophecy of the positive kind and this is something that could really be a game changer as my buddy would say clutch it would be clutch um so just you know try to avoid uh you know stay the course and, and try to avoid that debt and and always remember that it's the 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 process of saving money towards retirement is really a a marathon not a sprint and so it's not all going to happen overnight it's not all going to happen tomorrow but over time it's going to grow. You're going to get to the point. And they say, I was just watching a video today where they say, you know, the first hundred thousand dollars you save is the most difficult. And then the other, the, the, the rest of it becomes easy because then it's, it's just growing on itself. It's uh, it continues to, to build that momentum. And then so, you know, it's and, and the, the goal is really just to have steady, consistent contributions over time. You know, a, a lot of a lot of people will talk about things like, you know, pay yourself. Well, this is actually in practice paying yourself um, because you're taking money that you, that you made from work. And I'm assuming most of us work, um, but you take money from when you work. And you, um, you know, that money is, is going back to you and it's growing. And so what happens, you end up playing with borrowed money. Um, you know, I had a situation, I was talking to somebody the other day. I remember before the markets uh, 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 recovered, I remember I had bought something or did something. And I remember I was stressed out because I bought it out of my checking account. And I was thinking, man, I didn't, I don't know if I wanted to spend that. Then I go back and look at a, look at a mutual fund. I made what I spent on that other thing. So that other thing was was actually um, I actually made money on it because I was actually I actually made more in that mutual fund than I spent on the thing that I bought. So again, it happens over time, and you know just don't don't get discouraged if the markets go down because the markets will go down for a little bit, but they'll always come roaring back. And again, you know this is going back. Let's we can go back a hundred years because uh, you know you look at the Great Depression and how difficult that was, and I know a lot of us have. Family members that were affected by that, but those, but the stocks have recovered and gone up, you know, a thousand fold since then. And again, I don't know the exact amount. Uh, if anybody does know, please let me know because I would like to uh, make sure that's somewhere in the comments where people uh, understand because that's how, you know, when you look at like the Warren Buffetts or you look at, um, 
I don't know, Bill Gates, you look at other folks, the way they make their money, it's by it's by saving and investing. And you have access to that. And, and a lot of people may not know that. And that's one of the reasons we're talking about it today. So um, that's about all I had for today. Um, you know, I, I think that um, the, the idea of saving for retirement uh, seems complicated. And I think for those of you that are in your uh, 20s, uh, I know you have a bunch of people trying to uh, talk to you about saving a bunch of money and, and, and eating Starbucks and, or drinking Starbucks and eating avocado toast. And, you know, I'm not I'm not here to advocate for, for not doing that, but just make sure that you take a little bit um, at, for yourself. So feed yourself, feed your soul with your avocado toast and your coffee, but also uh, feed your future with a little bit. And, and even if it's a small amount, even if it's 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, you know, over time, it just continues to grow. And historically, um, people that start in their 20s, uh, you start now with $100, $200, $300 a month. You can make some significant dough by the time you hit retirement age. So, And again, you're talking to a guy that that, that worked for. And so it, takes, so it does take a little bit of discipline. Uh, it takes some planning. Uh, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And I, I'm not going to make it complicated because it wasn't complicated for me. Um, I, I think in an early video, earlier video, I talk about the book that I read when I was 22, um, The Nine Steps to Financial Freedom uh, by Susie Orman. And um, if, if we get to um, 500 subscribers, because um, we're at 300 now, um, but if we get to 500 subscribers, maybe we'll do a uh, maybe we'll do a raffle um, for that book and uh, send that book out to somebody so you have a, a tool to read. So, if if anybody would be interested in that, please let me know in the comments below, and um, maybe we'll make that happen. And I'll if that is the case, if that is indeed the case, and you are interested in that, um, then we will uh, I will respond in a. Uh, either a short or a, a message just to confirm that, that we are going to do that. But I, I just think it was a book that changed my life because it took things that seemed really complicated, similar to what I'm trying to do here, but making it really simple. And it gave real nine, uh, real nine, real simple, easy steps that fundamentally changed my life. And, you know, again, helped me because it helped me get to, um, financial independence and I was able to retire at 51. So, uh, that's about all I had. Um, you know, if you uh, like the channel, um, uh, you know, consider subscribing. Um, you know, I put up I put up comment uh, content regularly. Um, I usually do uh, two long form videos like this uh, during the week on uh, Saturday and Wednesday, and then I do uh, YouTube Shorts all the time. So you'll see Shorts if you go on there and you see Shorts and you look for Ask Ask Sabado. Uh, you'll see a bunch of shorts for me, and or if you go to my page, you'll see everything. And if there's a if there's something that you would like to talk about, let me know. Uh, let me know. Um, you know, I, I respond to um, all of my um, uh, comments with either a a thumbs up, thumbs down if it's not constructive, or and I don't have any thumb down thumbs down on there. Um, but I, I respond to all my comments with either a, some type of uh, impression or um, I, I write back. If you have a question, I'll write you back. I, I'm, you know, I, I think it's important because the reality is, is for all of us to kind of teach. The, we're a community and we have a responsibility to each other to help each other live our best lives. And, you know, the way that I'm helping our community here is by just giving people information about what worked for me for, for retiring earlier. So on that note, I think we're we're good, um, but if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments. And on that note, have a good day, and I will talk to you soon.